Hi, and welcome back to Rural Spin. Uh, what we're going to do today is make some ricotta cheese, which is about the easiest cheese that you can make. Um, I did have some people asking me to make mozzarella instead. However, uh, ricotta gets a bum rap because the stuff in the store tastes like crap. So no wonder no one wants to use it. Ricotta is so easy to make and it tastes so good when you do it yourself that I wanted to show you this to encourage you to try it because of the many uses that you can have for ricotta in your own kitchen. Uh, not just as uh, an ingredient in lasagna, but also for things like an accompaniment to cereal in the morning. Uh, you can use it as a base for a dessert instead of ice cream. You can add it to soups and stews. It's just a wonderful cheese that for the ease that it takes to make it, uh, there's no reason not to try it out at least. Uh, just a note as usual on milk. I use raw milk, but most people don't have access to that. Pasteurized milk is fine for making ricotta. What you want to try to do, though, is avoid ultra-homogenized milk. Uh, homogenized milk is fine, but if you see ultra-homogenized on the milk carton that you buy in the store, don't buy the milk because it won't work so well with cheese making, and there's a good chance it won't work at all. So what I have here is a half gallon of milk. I just have it in a pot, and I heated it to 185 degrees, turned off the heat, which is where we're at now, so the only thing you have to do to make ricotta is heat it to 185 and then you stir in a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter of a cup of white plain vinegar. Just dump it in there. If you want to do this with a full gallon, that's fine. You'll just use uh, about a third of a cup of vinegar and a, a teaspoon of salt. Then you just stir it all in and you'll be able to see the curd starting to form almost immediately, which is great. And uh, so what we're going to do now is put the lid on it and basically wait for two hours. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you can't get much easier than making ricotta cheese. So after it sits for two hours is when the curds will really be able to form and we'll come back at that point and strain it out so you can see it. Uh, but for now, I'll show you a picture of what this looks like, and then we'll come back in a couple hours. But uh, right now, I'm headed out to go see a lady about some chickens. Excited! Okay, welcome back. And it's been two hours since we mixed our milk uh, that had been warmed to 185 degrees with um, about a half gallon I used. You can use a full gallon. And I mixed it with a quarter cup of white vinegar and a half teaspoon of salt. Um, just put the lid on it and uh, let it sit. You don't stir it while you're waiting for those two hours. And what you get is uh, cheese basically floating in whey. So now what uh, we're gonna do is separate the whey from the ricotta. Uh, what I have here is just a traditional colander. I put some butter muslin in it. Um, you can also just use a, a, a dishcloth. It doesn't have to be muslin or anything like that. Just something where the liquid can drain through. And then I have a bowl here uh, that I use. You could just do this right in the sink, but I like to save the whey. I use it in cooking. I use it in biscuits, bread. Um, it's really good to cook beans in. Um, so you can use whey for a variety of things. So don't throw it out unless you really don't have any interest in it. Um, and I have the pot of ricotta here floating in the whey. So now all I'm going to do is take a, just a strainer. I've used ladles before. You can use a spoon. And just dish it out. You know, it comes out in uh, a pretty big wad. I mean, it totally separates. I'm not sure how well you can see this with the lighting, you know, until Martha Stewart gets my option or something, I'm stuck with this kitchen, so some of my <laughs> some of uh, my video is not the best, but what are you gonna do? So you just leave it drain a little bit and then you just kinda put it in the butter muslin and at that point you wouldn't need to necessarily strain it anymore, it's just kind of a function of how dry you want your ricotta. This little skimmer I have is great because it pretty much gets it all in one whack. So I like that because I'm lazy. <laughs> so this is uh, the ricotta. Um, so you can see that. You can see that it's kind of yellow. Um, that's a function of what the cows eat. 
and I have a grass fed, you know, organic milk and all that. So that's good. And then here's uh, the ricotta that you can see in there. And that's it. I mean, it's ricotta cheese now. You don't really have to do anything else to it at all. Um, I like mine a little drier because I like to use it in different things like uh, uh, raviolis and things. So all you do, if you want to make it drier, is gather up your muslin here and then you can just squish it a little bit to strain it or you can just leave it hang someplace. Just put a rubber band around it. I just usually leave it hanging on the faucet if I'm going to do that. I use the same method for yogurt cheese. Or you can just press it and get the extra way out. And then call it good. Let's taste it because it's good. The spoon. Mm. It's so good. If you make this ricotta, I guarantee that you will one, never buy store-bought ricotta again, and two, you'll be eating ricotta a lot for all kinds of different purposes. So have fun with it. It's easy. It tastes fabulous, and you can mix herbs with it. You can mix uh, cream cheese in it for desserts, you know, any kind of honey, peanut butter, you name it. You can mix it with ricotta, and it'll taste awesome. So uh, next time I make cheese, I promise I'll make ricotta or uh, mozzarella. And other than that, you know, have fun in the kitchen and, and whip yourself up some ricotta because it's so darn easy. Thanks.